Howdy, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Your Drone Questions Answered. I am your host for this one, David Young, founder of Drone Launch Academy, and I have with me today Root Patel, Mr. Mapping. He teaches some mapping courses with us, and I have him here to answer the question for us, how can surveyors use drones, and how are they using drones? And so Root is a good person to talk to about this because right now he works with a survey firm and is helping stand up a sort of a drone program for them, and he's doing all the data collection and processing with hopes of eventually handing that off to them to have a program up and running to help them do their surveys faster. So, Root, let's dive in. Talk a little bit about what you're doing with that survey firm, maybe how they were doing surveys before and how the drone changes that, what kind of use cases they have. You know, the survey firm that I'm currently working with, they've been around for 35 years and they have total experience of 80 years. All the partners are very knowledgeable and they're actually very reputable in the survey field, but they've been using traditional ways and there's nothing wrong with that, but it just takes so long. And they went, they were catching up to everything. They realized that we do need to implement drones because a lot of time their customer would ask for them for the drone service too. And they would ask like, do you do the with the drone? Because they know that it just makes it process a lot faster, a lot quicker than the traditional method. To give you an example, some survey take up to months, like, you know, three, 400 acres of survey it would take months to do all the detailed surveying and stuff. Drone allows them to do within a week, like the whole process from end to start to finish. And it's just not the drone, it's the photogrammetry, the method of mapping, how to get the data. It just makes it the whole process easier. And the deliverables, it's very pretty to look at and uh, deliverables are actually very useful to them. Now with that, what are the common deliverables? So deliverables, the, basically the stuff you hand over to the client or this, in this case, the survey firm. What is it that they're looking to get from you when you go out and use a drone to capture data for an area and do photogrammetry or LIDAR? Because I know you're doing some LIDAR stuff too with them, right? Yes. What they're basically looking for is the surface. That's what the main thing is about. Uh, Usually when the survey company hires a drone pilot or they have internal drone team, what they're looking to, of course, they want the ortho mosaic point cloud and everything that they can use for survey. But what they are main interested is in the grid point and delivering the surface. A true surface that doesn't have any utilities on it that can allow them to actually see what the earth look like on that particular area. What's the lay of the land? Gives them the perfect reference in real life. It tells them exactly what the surface look like and that's what they're interested in and usually the formats they're in is a uh, lend XML XML file or a CSV file and they can basically open that in AutoCAD and use in their survey process yeah I so I don't know if you guys remember I talked to Nate Howard several episodes back and he does survey stuff for a very large construction company they use drones and he was talking about how Previously, they'd have to go out with GNSS receivers like every 25 feet and shoot specific points to get. And that would then create that sort of ground surface level. You're saying, hey, at this exact coordinate, this is the height. Okay, at this exact coordinate, this is the height. And then that can sort of show you what the terrain looks like. Talk through that process a little bit. So that's sort of what you're giving them in that CSV file is like, hey, at this coordinate, here's the height. And, you know, and then at this coordinate, here's the height, and that's thousands of those points, right? And so yeah. that's sort of what they're after. And when you say terrain, that's what, like, buildings are moved, trees are moved, vegetation, yes. things like that. Terrain means just the terrain. That's just the ground. That's what basically we are giving them, yeah. Talk a little bit about what that process is like. I know it's got many steps, but if you were going to go out, you know, you – hey, this is the area we need, we're going to make a flight plan, we sure. take all of our pictures, we stitch them together in photogrammetry. There's some other items or some other steps involved, right, in getting that surface. What does that process sort of look like, just from a high level that sure, you have sure. to do? So the first thing is uh, project planning. You know, you talk to the client exactly what they're looking for, what the deliverables they want to make everything clear. Once you have everything and kind of understanding and the idea of what the project is going to look like, you can start planning out your ground control point. So the first step I would do is uh, look at the thing. And if I decide, okay, this is a survey we need to do with the drone or we need to do with the ground crew, but mostly all surveys are done with the drones now. So we make a flight plan. Before we make a flight plan, we plan out all the ground control points. Once we know we have all the ground control points planned out, we create a flight plan and make sure the flight plan is good enough to collect the data that's in what's required, but even more than what's required because it's of outside of the field because it's always good to have more data that you can work around later. Unnecessary data you can delete, but you cannot 
continue going back to site and collecting more data. So it's very important to collect enough data. After collect data, I check everything's right. We go do processing now. Now we process multiple different softwares, some are Pix4D, Mapper, Pix4D Surveyor, Virtual Surveyor. If you're working with photogrammetry, if you're working with LiDAR, using different software like flight planning softwares are different for the, those drones. Data processing is different. TerraSolid is a good one, industry standard kind of. There are so many. For, for LiDAR? Uh, for LiDAR, yes. Topo DOT, Topo DOT, it's mainly used for Department of Transportation and those software, but LiDAR 360, so many different software. Then we create, clean up the point cloud or clean up the ortho mosaic, and then we kind of create the surface, what server we're really looking for and we try to deliver to them in a way that actually makes sense. So it's plug and play. They can just open their file even in their AutoCAD and without having any problem. So that's what they're basically looking for. And this is what the planning kind of includes. Yeah, it's something interesting you were showing me that might be interesting to those out there. Like once you, think if you're not as familiar with mapping, this might, I'll try to simplify it, but you can use, you can use something like Pix4D Mapper or really just need to get a point cloud. There's a bunch of, if you want to go just practice on really cheap or, or free ones, like Maps Made Easy is a really uh, inexpensive one, sort of pay as you go. But you're going to create some type of point cloud, yes. and that's what you can bring in then to something like Pix4D Survey. And then you were showing me that it's interesting you can get sort of the grid points. So it shows, hey, every X number of feet create a yeah. point and then give us the coordinates of that point with the height. And that's sort of what is exported later to kind yes. of create that topography. So right? those grid points, those grid points actually represent uh, the surface. It's a representation of the surface because all those are points are laid out on the ground, on the terrain. So it represents the surface. Yeah. And using those grid points, you can create the TIN surface, the TIN file, then that allows them to see the whole surface. We can export that into AutoCAD. Yeah. Now, when you first started working with the service, I guess, what is the thing that they are most excited about maybe when you're getting this data for them and handing it to what, what parts do they find the most useful or what do you think like if you were going to go to a different survey company and you're going to try to get them excited about hey you should use drones because here's why like what's your sort of sales pitch yeah so basically just the timing that it's the amount of time that you save and the, every time when you because whenever survey companies work they send out the survey crew out in the field and they're paid by hourly the biggest expense is the payroll it would just cut down time in a lot shorter time. So for example, whatever it takes months to do traditionally, it can be done in a week, if not in a few days, you know, but a uh, few weeks, in a week, three, four weeks worth of time, and, and that could be used more productively for something. Other time. projects, exactly. Bring more profitability, reduce the spending, and that's what drones allows to do. Also, the data accuracy, it's a lot better because you are collecting way more data than a normal human being. There are so many points, I can keep going on it, but just the speed, the accuracy, reliability of the data, and the access of the data. And now we are at the point, before it was very hard, that it was so hard to combine drone data for the survey, but now we have resources available, so many that we can actually learn how to use that data and give it to the deliverables in a way that would make it easy for our client. So another question, you're doing these jobs and projects for survey clients. What drone are you typically using for that? How big are these project areas sure, you're typically sure. doing? I mean, there are many different drones for many different projects, but the one we are basically using on almost every job, photogrammetry related job, is the Mavic 3 Enterprise with the DRTK station. Yeah, those that's the drone, but uh, some job require uh, a LiDAR. So we are flying a different one if there is a huge job, thousands of acres we are planning, we're actually doing a project pretty soon that's going to be 2,500 acres mapping. So we're going to use fixed wing for that okay. and uh, use fixed wing to collect data because, again, it's just a lot faster that way. I actually did talk to someone, talking to someone in the company, and I was mentioning fixed wing, and they thought I was talking about real plane, but I mean like a fixed wing UAV. Yeah. But there are fixed wing, um, usually big survey companies or survey companies who are doing a big area, they fly fixed wing yep. like an actual aircraft to collect those data. But the cost is so much higher. Mm. When you use drone, you're not going to make a huge difference in timing. 
and you're going to fly get a lot more accurate data that way cool yeah as we wrap up here how do you see the future of this going for surveyors i will say we just did a big i just did a bunch of courses filming new courses with different people in the survey field or related to it and i kind of heard the same trend like every surveyor basically is going to start using drones now do you yeah are you can you kind of agree see it going that way i agree i agree survey is uh, surveying field and geomatics is a very serious field and very professional people work in it i think it's just another tool Another tool is going to help them surveyors do the job a lot better, a lot faster, a lot quicker, and do it with precision. And that's going to improve their profitability. And that's why this is very important. I see the future of service very bright because the tools that are coming out, the technology we have right now compared to what it was 10 years ago is drastically different. And it's keep getting better and better. New technology is coming along. And it's becoming more accessible to people. It's not the learning curve. Still, there is a huge learning curve, but it was not what it was used to be 10 years ago. All right. Well, thanks, Root. That was our episode of Your Drone Questions Answered. Hope you learned a little bit about surveyors and what they use drones for and or use service providers or partners to do drones to get their data collection. So thanks for coming on. We'll see you all later.